Okay, follow up video to the making, not making, measuring spooks. Um, building a wheel. Now, before I get started properly, I do want to say that I'm still sort of an amateur at this, um, as with everything, but I want to go through how to lace a wheel up. Um, the whole getting it trued, getting the spoke tensions right is a whole other matter but lacing it together and getting it roughed in isn't isn't too hard. Um, you have to get your hub, you've worked out your spoke length, so you've got your spokes, um, you're going to need a spoke tool, a spoke key, so I've got that and I've also got a screwdriver which I've just modified with a little slit in the end which fits in to the end of your spoke and allows the so the end of the spoke nipple and that allows the spoke to slide up there if it does need to. Um, and I've also got a jar of uh, gearbox oil just to lubricate the end of the spokes and it helps them go on and helps them stay on. So I just like to dip them in there and uh, then they've got a bit of lubrication, helps it all go together. Oh and of course the rim. So everything's there and it's ready to be built. Building a wheel. As I said, if you're not confident on this, then always get your local bike shop to do it. Um, or you can do some more reading. Like most of this stuff, most of this stuff I learnt on this has come from Sheldon Brown's website, but there are plenty of others. So you can always check on them if you want to know more info. But it's pretty simple. Um, you've got your rim. You've got generally a manufacturer's mark, manufacturer's sticker. It's always good if you can have that on the drive side. So you're reading everything from the drive side and you're going to find your hole, spoke, uh, uh, valve hole. Now on this rim I've just noticed I've also got stamped manufacturer's marks reading the other way. So I could potentially have this rim going both ways. Um, and you'll notice the rim as well has got holes on one side and the other side. So you can see, next to my spoke hole, next to my valve hole, just there, the first spoke is to the top half of the rim. Um, it's going to be like an all rims, so they're going to be offset, and we're going to need to make sure we put the spokes in the right hole. So, if I was going to be looking at it like this, and reading it, reading this particular one, actually, and those stamps from the drive side, then I'm going to have my hub that way up. And that works great because then everything in this top flange is going to be going to these upper spokes. And the first spoke you're going to be putting in, your key spoke, is going to be going to that hole. However, if that hole is in on the upper side, the one, the one to the right of the valve hole is over here, that's fine as well. Um, it doesn't have to be directly next to it, it just has to be the one the, in the upper part to the right, if that makes sense. So, if that one was, say, a lower one, I would just go to this one. But we're working from the right, going round in a clockwise, in a clockwise manner. Whew, okay, so let's just start this off then. Um, we're going to be doing the trailing spokes first, and what that means is... Uh, the spokes run along the inside of the hub, so they're going to be running along there, coming from this side, going through, and running up the inside of the hub to the spoke hole. I'm going to get myself, how many of it? So there's 32 hole hubs, 16, so I need 8 spokes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight. I'm just going to get eight spokes ready, and again, these are just used spokes because I'm just building this wheel for a turbo trainer. And I'm just going to dip them in my um, wheel gearbox oil, just have a bit of lubrication on the end, and just leave them to the side, and then grab my hub, stick them through. It doesn't matter which ones, but if I have these, you need to be missing a hole so. Put one through, miss one, miss one, and 
and that is one side. Now, as I said, I'm going to be taking my first spoke, and I'm going to be calling this one my, well it's a trailing spoke, but it's also going to be the key spoke, and I'm going to put it in that upper segment next to the valve hole, the first hole to the right of the valve hole. Just going to thread it on a few turns, just so it sits there. Grab your next spoke, and now this next hole along is obviously going to be for the other side of the hub. This one is going to be for your leading spoke. So what you want to do is actually count to the fourth hole, so you go one, two, three, four, and that's where your next trailing spoke for this drive side is going to go. And you just follow that pattern all the way around, one, two, three, four. Okay, for this next part, um, I've got everything on this drive side plumbed in for the trailing spokes. I've got my key spoke which is here next to the valve hole and I've rotated the hub so that obviously they're all starting to spiral. I want to try and keep this position, keep the valve hole at the top and flip it over. So now instead of looking my key spoke being on the right of the valve hole, it's on the left. The first spoke you're going to want to put in on this side is going to be to the left of this key spoke because we're working in reverse. But where it goes on on the hub, and again these are all just have lubricated ends, if I follow this key spoke down, I want to try and get it so that when I put it through this hub, it's just going to sit to the underside of this key spoke, just going straight down. So it looks like that one is going to be the one that I need. And then I can just take this through. And again, just a few turns, just to get it started. And we're going to be follow the same pattern as we did before. So, miss one, put in a spoke, miss one, put in a spoke, miss one, put in a spoke. And we're going to put them all to the left-hand side of these, of the drive side trailing spokes that we've already installed. Okay, so that's the trailing spokes installed. Now, again, keeping the valve hole at the top, flip the wheel back over, because we're going to be working from the drive side again. And if you can get the hub, again, rotated round, so that it just starts to pull stuff into a spiral, that's great. Some of the spoke hole spokes might get stuck, and you can just give them a little push through the holes to help them round. But it's not critical, this. Um, next part is putting in the leading spokes. Um, and this is where you want to start doing your crosses. Obviously, the spokes are going to come from the opposite side of the hub. So instead of pushing them down and going along the inside of the flange, they're going to be coming up from the bottom. Like so. I'm going to be going over the top of the flange. Um, this part is not necessarily not. It's not necessary to um, work from the valve hole round, but it's always good to have a valve hole at the top just as an indicator. Um, but yeah, it depends on what you've chosen on the on the crossing pattern. But there, at the moment, it's following that key spoke. If I do there, it's only one cross, and I'll then be ended up in that valve, in that spoke hole. If I go there, 
it's two cross crossing two spokes it's going to get in that hole if I go around here it's three which is what I'm going to do because that's traditional um, and it's uh, generally fairly strong so I've got one spoke hold, spoke that I'm crossing two spokes that I'm crossing the third spoke I'm actually going to go underneath it and then go into this hole that is down here when I've got myself a nipple and just screw that on just slightly again there we go and repeat that again for the next eight spokes on this side because mine's a 32 hole rim so again you just get your spoke from the underside poke it through going to cross one two three going to go underneath the third into the appropriate hole on the rim and just fix it on and yeah just gonna go do, do the best of them now okay and with everything done on the drive side it's time to do exactly the same thing on the non-drive side so should just be able to get these spokes through cross one two under the third and hopefully No, apparently not. Yeah, cool. And then just follow that round and do with them. So I need one more spokes, nipples, one, two, three, four. Okay, so that is essentially the wheel laced up. All the spokes are in place loosely. Um, they're all crossed over as they're meant to be, but obviously we need to tension it all up. So what I'd like to do next is wind them up in increments. Um, I tend to, if I'm building a brand new wheel set with obviously correct size spokes and everything like that if everything's perfect I will wind them all wind all the spokes down in turn to the end of the threaded section looking from this side from the inside of the rim um, and then once all that's done I will then flip it over the other side and look at them from the other side and then when this spoke starts to just come level with the bottom of the slot in the top, I will stop and then go around obviously all of them again. So that's what I'm going to try and do this time and most of the time it works, um, most of the time it does and it gets them to a good degree of tension um, but yeah the art of it is after that when you're trying to get everything true, trying to set it all up um, and trying to get the spokes to feel right and it's good once you've done that initial setting like if I go down to the bottom of the threaded section if they're, all the, if they're all the same spokes as well then what I like to do is just give all the spokes just a good squeeze just to release any tension so I'm going to go around now where's the spoke the I'm going to start at the uh, doobie firkin hole valve hole and start the valve hole and work my way around. If you're screwing it from the underside, which is what you'll see, I've seen when the tires on, it's in reverse. So if you screw from the top, you're obviously going to go clockwise to do it up. And I will just go down to the base of the threaded section there, go to the next one. If I do that from 
the underside, which I can't get to at the moment, I'm going to be going anti-clockwise if you look at it from the underside. If you look at it from the top, obviously it's going to be going clockwise still. But if you look at it from the underside, remember it's backwards. So I'm going to do all these up. Okay, so that's the first round done and obviously you can see <laughs> the spokes are nowhere near tent tight, taut, tight enough. So it's just going around them now again, just incrementally. Um, try and do each one the same amount until you get them to you know a relatively degree of tightness. Um, so first I'm just going to go around and just do everything up until I can see the spoke is level with the base of the nipple slot and then I'm just going to go around each one and do it say a quarter of a turn, half a turn each time just until the spokes feel taut. Okay, so that's roughed in, that is roughed in now, but as I said, the lacing up is pretty much the easy part. The tricky part is trying to get it all true. Now spinning it, there is a, yeah, there's a pretty big wobble in that to be honest. Um, that can be, you can use your frame to do, correct that. So you just get your frame, put the wheel in, um, and then use a cable tie or something from, from one side or the other, um, and try and measure the centre so that you get in, you've set those cable ties um, at a distance where when you spin the rim, it wants to just, just touch it. Or if you've got a stand, great, you can use that. Um, but yeah, that's the next stage, trying to go on to truing it and getting it all running square and true, obviously. Um, but that can take some time, so I might actually just grab my stand from indoors and just run through those points a little bit um, to try and help you out. But as I said, I'm not an expert on this, I'm still trying to learn the techniques of truing it, especially the spoke tension. Your rim will have a spoke tension, um, a maximum tension of the spokes that it's allowed, depends on the different manufacturers and what materials and all that. So you have to try and, in really good builds, get those spoke tensions equal throughout the uh, entire rim. Um, that is an art as well because once you try and relieve the tension of one to try and make reduce it to make it equal you obviously knock out the trueness of the rim both laterally and vertically because it's going to have a bit of wobble that way as well so yeah it is a it is a fine art and I'm nowhere near skilled enough to go through everything like that at the moment Okay, so I've just set it up on my stand, um, and usually I'd say with new spokes, new nipples, new rim, a complete new build, I can get this, I can get a, a build to you know a pretty good tolerance uh, just by doing that technique of going down to the thread of the spoke and then going level with the top. This is a mix of used rim, used hub, various used spokes, just trawling through the thing and different nipples, so it's a bit all over the place, um, I'm not going to lie. Um, so spinning it round, you can see there is definitely a high spot coming out this way. Um, I've already tweaked it a little bit to get it reasonable-ish, but there is still that high spot, so I can just bring my stand in a little bit and then I can hear 
here where it's scraping so it's touching too much on this side but also the main thing where this big here this big bulge comes off this side I can fix that more importantly which appears to be around here so that would tell me that the spokes on this side are too tight and the spokes on this side are too loose so what I want to try and do if this let's say this spoke right here that's in between the gauges at the moment that's your trouble point so that spoke is too loose because it's on this side of the rim what I want to try and do to pull that over that way is to go work around it because it's not just that one isolated spot so if I come to the spokes either side which are on the opposite side of the rim and loosen them off ever so slightly let's say a quarter turn each but then also do the one up by a quarter turn that should have an effect hopefully and we'll keep on going around the rim doing that until I get it spot on hopefully but as I say not everyone has a chewing stand like this um, which one is this the TSB 2.2 um, and this will get it pretty accurate okay well I think that's pretty much it now um, wheels built it's trued in mm, let's say 95% um, I've got it centered got everything to where it should be so it's sitting in the center now because it was further over this side um, and yeah it's it's not too bad but I've I've still got stuff to learn so yeah I, I why did I make this video I don't know but anyway that's how you lace together a wheel um, the lacing part as I said is not that hard um, just take it's quite therapeutic actually um, it's this truing part that's the hardest part and that's why I say if you don't have the equipment if you don't want to invest in the equipment because you're not going to be doing lots of wheel building then just take it to your local bike shop um, they'll happily do it for you for price obviously but um, for that one wheel set it's not going to be worth investing in something like this uh, and it takes practice so practice makes perfect as I said I'm still learning but it was requested as a follow-up so here it is and I hope you enjoy um, and yeah on that note I will leave it there